All right, these turn one videos are usually a tier two on turn one, but for the first time in ages, I don't know how long it's actually been, but I get the sloth in the opening shop. I'm sure I've had that before. At this point, I've had almost 40 sloths. Um, so I probably have had it before, but I can't remember how long ago it was. And I've edited it out, but I actually sat there for a long time trying to decide what to do if I was going to go for the sloth release again. But because it's Star Pack, that would exclude the free-to-play players, so I decided not to do it. And just take another crack at the level 3 ribbon. It's been so long, and I still don't have it. So, um, okay, start in terms of finding all the pets that I like. I like Mouse, Kiwi, and Duckling. You're basically guaranteed to lose the early turns, which we do here. But it means that... Um, I'm ready to stack buffs onto either Jellyfish or Salamander, and I did have the choice of them there, but I decided to go for Jellyfish. Um, I think it's just generally better with Sloth, because we want to try and get the Sloth to level 3, so we're hopefully going to be looking for some level ups. Now, there aren't very many ways to do that in Star Pack, unfortunately. It's basically the worst place to get Sloth these days, now that Weekly Pack has guaranteed chocolate. You can either use Praying Mantis plus Blobfish, or you can use Crow. And here, on turn 4, the level up from Mouse gives Starfish, which is the best case scenario, really. And we'll take, take the Starfish and sell the Mouse immediately to start giving some uh, buffs to the Sloth, I think, so that it actually has kind of a usable stat line. The, the best thing about getting Starfish here is that because we're relying on finding Crows, the Starfish will be hopefully leveled up by then and it will mean that each crow buy sell also is scaling the team and not just uh, generating the chocolate so we need to try and scale the jellyfish and sloth as fast as possible so that they're not behind the curve once it comes time to buy sell as many crows as as uh, as we can now here i th make a bit of a mistake i freeze the the clownfish thinking about potentially getting extra buffs onto the jelly when I level it up, but since I have the starfish, really leveling up the jellyfish is not necessary at all. And I find another starfish here, so I just give up on the clown. And next turn, we're going to look to level the starfish and then really start by selling like crazy. And this is going to be another draw, so it's going to be turn six with only one win. So that is a little bit concerning. However, we level Starfish into a Platypus, which is the ideal scenario, and then both the Beaver and Duck buy cells um, hit the Jelly and the Sloth. So already you can see how quickly the Starfish is able to scale some of these pets, and finding multiple mice in the shop um, is even better. So 13.15, I think the Sloth was 1-1 uh, one, one, like three turns ago. Um, now, Star Pack is kind of notorious for having a lot of, um, you know, scaling one big unit. So it could be um, Yak, it could be Salamander, it could be Jellyfish. So having the, the uh, three squad with the Starfish buy cells and concentrating the buffs, um, I think it's a perfectly fine strategy um, in this pack. Especially when you roll into lots of um, platypi, uh, platypuses. Unfortunately here, both the Duck and Beaver... Um, leech some of the buffs away but we do find another starfish and it probably is worth going for the level three if i can get it now this team does have a level two a copy that is uh scaled up quite drastically but the donkey switches things around and actually i think uh, saves me there another starfish in the shop and um you could run two of them side by side but i think i'd rather just combine them all together and increase the chances of buffing the sloth and the uh, jelly. Unfortunately, again, the buffs get wasted, but you have to buy cell platypus every time you see it, um, especially early on, because it's free. <laughs> um, if you have two slots open, it's free. So I think here I just buy the cheese for the, the starfish just so it's a little bit more effective attack-wise, especially if it gets pulled to the front um, by seahorse. And you can see here it does get pulled forwards a bit, but the opposing team just doesn't have the stats. Um, Starfish initially, you know, you're sacrificing a few lives, but you're going to outscale stuff very quickly. And um, the problem now is that it's turn nine, and I don't think I've seen a single crow. 
So, I mean, Mantis Blobfish is pretty much off the table. Um, I, maybe, I guess, since we have two slots open, I guess it wasn't completely impossible, but um, I think uh, Crow is the, the best possibility. And I, I do keep rolling Platypus, but not finding any Crows, which is um, a little bit unfortunate. We are only on four trophies, so there is definitely still time to do it. And here we actually um, comfortably win, even though we're running the turn 9-3 squad. And here is the first crow. So you can see, although it's going to cost, um, what is it, uh, 5 gold for the chocolate, we are also getting the plus 2-2 two, two buff, um, which is uh, very nice. And there is the starfish level 3. I think I just take it. Um, we might as well. We know we need to buy, sell at least uh, 4 more crows to get the sloth leveled up. However, the, the jellyfish and the sloth are actually closing in on 50-50 pretty quickly. And um, another team that just uh, doesn't have the stats to stand up. And we get the Velociraptor in the shop, which, given that we have two strawberry units, seems like an auto-buy. Um, the only problem is it does mean that there's no longer two slots for the, the Platypus buy sell. It probably still is worth it, given that we have the level 3 starfish. In fact, it's definitely worth it. But... Um, one of the consequences of this is that having the raptor drastically increases the chances that I'm going to win each each round. And although we were quite far behind with a lot of early draws, um, six wins, now seven, means we don't have very many turns left to find the remaining crows. So here, maybe I shouldn't be tunnel visioning on just by selling the platypus and the, the kiwi. I should just be hard rolling for crow um so really i guess it depends on what what do you think is more important is it better to risk everything for the level three sloth um or is it better to try and win um and i don't know what the odds would be if i win the next three runs of finding four crows probably not very good um but then you have to also consider if you, uh, at this point, because we're going to, you know, if we lose, we're going to go quite late. Um, if I do then waste three or four turns looking for a crow uh, and get the slot to level three, what are the chances that I could bring in um, other units at the last minute and still win the game? Um, so what happens here is we're now on eight trophies. I find one more crow. And obviously, I know if I win this next one, there's no way. Uh, it's literally impossible to find enough crows on the next turn, I think. Um, so, yeah, because because it's so costly compared to our regular chocolate, you know, in theory, in the regular game, you can spend nine gold for three chocolates. But that won't even buy you two crows um, in, the, in the star pack. So I actually edited out here a massive long wait where I just tried to decide what I was going to do. And instead I decided there just to buy, sell the, uh, to try and get the sloth to 50-50. I don't think I've ever had a 50-50 sloth, but even with the, the apple, it's only going to be a 49-50 and we go into battle and the opposing team has no coconut, no pepper, so in the end, although their stats were good, it's an easy win for the Sloth. So not level 3, but um, a pretty decent win. Although I've had almost 40 Sloths at this point, I've maybe only had 3 or 4 actual wins. So still a good game.